Hello, I wanted to share a quick video of replacing the fuel sender and fuel pickup in a 1964 Buick Wildcat. Now, most cars we'd be starting underneath the car to do this process, but on a 64 Buick, you start right in the trunk. I decided to replace the sender because I knew I'd be removing the old one while inspecting the tank for a fuel delivery problem. The only known issue I had is the tank would read a quarter of a tank when it was actually empty. To start the process, the jack plate, retaining hardware, and spare tire come out of the trunk. Next, locate the access plate that's on the passenger side of the trunk under where the spare tire was. Five 5 16 screws are removed to gain access to the top of the sender. If you have an air conditioned car like I do, you'll have a 5 16 fuel line and a quarter inch fuel line return. If the factory style band clamps are in place, a pair of pliers will allow you to remove tension from the clamps and move them off the hoses. Now remove each hose from the sender. Remove the sender's wire to the fuel sender with a 3 8 inch socket. Don't worry about shorting the wire as it runs off a ground signal, not a hot one. Vacuum the area once the hoses are removed, loosening any dirt you see. Remove the 5 5 16 bolts that hold the sender to the tank. Gently rock the sender to break the seal. Pull it up and rotate to remove. Have a tray or rags handy to catch errant fuel splatter. Now is a good time to inspect your tank. When I looked in the tank, I saw what looked like a fuel spout in it. I had to drain the tank to get it to stop floating. I tried draining it through the filler, but the pump wouldn't reach even with an extension, so I had to carefully drain it from within the trunk. I was then able to extract what I thought was the spout with a cut fiberglass rod from the home improvement store that was originally a driveway marker. When it came out, I realized it was a toy carrot. This was nothing like anything my children play with, so I think the person that put it in the tank predated them. I inspected the inside of the tank and finding no rust, I cleaned off the mounting flange with Simple Green to get ready to transition to the reinstallation. A new fuel sender is available many places and reproduced in stainless steel. I test fit my sender in the parts car tank because the instructions said it may need to have the sender rod bent and sure enough mine did require a little adjustment not to hit the side of the tank. I also checked that all holes would line up, which they did. Some senders may need one of the holes elongated. Once I was ready to install the sender in my tank, I used just a tiny amount of waterproof grease on the seal and then pre-installed it on the sender assembly. I want to give you a tip I wish I knew and that was attach your hoses to the sender before you screw it in the tank. Now let's talk about hoses for a second. On these full-size cars, there are metal lines that run down the passenger side of the car for gas and there are rubber lines at the engine end and the gas tank end. I had previously replaced the hoses at the front of the car, but at the time didn't realize there were rubber hoses at the back of the car. Because the hoses at the tank were 56 years old, I replaced them with brand new bulk hose from the auto parts store. I want to show you on the parts car tank this channel right here where the hoses go through. Now in order to get the new hoses through this channel underneath the car, I figured that the easiest thing to do would be to join the hoses together, and I did that simply by cutting a pencil down into a dowel to join both hoses. The new hose pushed the old hose out of the channel. With both hoses installed, I attached them to the new sender and reinstalled the hose clamps. I prefer to keep the original hose clamps because there's no risk of over tightening. Place the bolts back in place for the sender, Tighten them in a star pattern like you would lug nuts. I cleaned the terminal for the fuel gauge, and then I attached it and tightened it. I left the access hatch off at this point so that I could check for leaks. I'm going to transition under the car to hook up the new hoses. The rear termination for the rubber lines is in the wheel well close to the frame. The hose for the return line ended up having to be cut to get it to release. The new return hose is pushed onto the existing hard line, and then my 516 supply line attaches to an inline electric fuel pump for priming purposes, which I show in another video. Now that the sender's installed, we're going to go ahead and crank it up, and then I'm going to check for leaks.
with a successful test drive under our belt. I'm gonna take it back home. I'm gonna check it for leaks again. And if everything is great, we're gonna call it a success. Thank you so much for watching.